So let's start thinking about risk premiums in the term structure. Uh, our expectations hypothesis model was about the, the risk neutral, I put that in quotes because it's not quite true term, but risk neutral thinking. But clearly, we had risk premiums. What should those risk premiums be? What do we expect for those things? So let's think about that. Uh, the first version of the, one version of the expectations hypothesis is we thought about holding a uh, one period bond or a, uh, a uh, long term bond for the, uh, for the next year. So which end of those do you think is riskier? Is it riskier to hold a, a two year bond for a year or to hold the one year rate? Well, the two year bond, right? <laughs> the one year rate, you know what the rate of return is. The two year bond could come out one thing or another. So that makes it look like the two year bond is riskier. We expect a risk premium in the long term bonds. Uh, we expect those prices to be lower. We expect the yields to be higher than the expectations hypothesis predicts. But wait a minute. Let's look at the other end. Let's think about investing for, for n years. Which is riskier now? Is it riskier to invest directly in the n year bond or to roll over uh, short term bonds? There seems pretty net, right? You know exactly what you're going to get in the n year bond. You don't know there's rollover risk in the one year bonds. Maybe interest rates go up, maybe they go down. Now it looks like the opposite. N year bonds look like they're the safe one, and one year bonds look like they're not so safe. Well, maybe, wait a second, you say, uh, what if variations in the term structure are all due to inflation? What if the real interest rates for one-year bonds are constant? There's inflation, inflation varies. If there's a lot of inflation, that 30-year bond could end up being worthless. So in fact, that one depends. It depends not just on your investment horizon. It depends on whether the risks in the term structure are risks to real rate variation or risks to inflation variation. Nonetheless. It's kind of puzzling. Uh, there is, I think, a presumption that long-term bonds should be safer. The long-term index bonds that take out inflation, those are the risk-free asset for long-horizon investors. If you buy a, a long-term bond, who knows what's going to happen along the way? It might go like that, might let go like that, but it's always going to end up paying off, uh, paying off when, when we're done, unless the US government defaults, and then we've got big problems on our hands. So if you are a long-term investor, you should ignore price changes, and the long-term bond is your riskless asset. I emphasize this because all of Wall Street wisdom says cash is the riskless asset, but, but that's not true. So the real yield curve should slope down, and most of our yield curve models have a real yield curve that slopes down. It's a little bit puzzling because the actual yield curve doesn't. It slopes up. Uh, so there's a little bit of presumption, presumption that way. How would we think about this a little more than just guessing and, and telling stories? Uh, we would think about it, of course, with a model. Uh, we would write down expected return is, is risk aversion times covariance with consumption growth. Now, the return on a bond, uh, when, when the yield goes up, the return goes down. Right? The yield goes up means the prices go down. So the, the return on the bond is roughly n maturity times the change in yield. So the expected SS return should depend on the covariance of interest rates uh, with consumption growth, risk aversion coefficient, and maturity. It should be bigger for longer maturities bonds. So the issue is, in finance lingo, what is the market price of interest rate risk? Uh, interest rate risk is the chance that interest rates go up or down, and it carries a market price, an expected return, if it's correlated with, with consumption growth or, or all the factors that matter. Put another way, <laughs> does a shock to interest rates, interest rates going unexpectedly up, does that tend to come with good or bad consumption growth news? Well, I just look at the data, it seems to come with good consumption growth news, right? Interest rates will go up if we get out of the recession, so that it might, you know, a guess would be that these are positively correlated. Hence, again, a negative risk premium for long-term bonds. Well, that's empirical. <clears throat> We're going to stop guessing. We're going to go look at the empirical evidence. One reason I'm going to look at the empirical evidence is because we don't have good theory yet. A really good model of this sort that fits the data and explain things. I don't have one to show you yet. Maybe you'll write that model. So in summary, what do we got? The expectations hypothesis, the, the strict expectations hypothesis is no risk premium. When people say expectations hypothesis, they mean, okay, but there's a small risk premium, but that is constant over time. 
A failure of the expectations hypothesis says that the risk premium varies through time, that, that these variations in the slope of the term structure don't correspond properly to variations in expected future interest rate changes. Let's go look in the data and see what the data say about the expectations hypothesis, and, and, and we'll wait to fit theories to those facts once we find out what those facts are. Thank you.